I think that's an appropriate response. <laughs> but that's awesome. Will you stand for a prayer together, please? Um, before I teach, I began um, in pastoral ministry 34 years ago. And probably 25 or so years ago, I heard um, an old, old preacher say a prayer. And I wish I had thought of it, but, but I didn't. Uh, but for the last 25 years, I have stolen it, and I have used it. And it is just simply the prayer that um, when I teach in any form, whether it's what you might call preaching or teaching in some other form, it's my hope that God will uh, allow me to hide behind His shadow and His cross and that what you see and hear would truly um, be something from Him. And so, Lord, I offer that to you. I pray that as we come together, I would recede and you would enlarge. That our view of you would be very clear. And that through my words, your word might be heard. I thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. On your, um, on the back side of your bulletins is a little place for you to take notes if you'd like to do that. Uh, New Song also has uh, something on the U version app in the Bible that you can follow along the service live, and you can take notes in that. And the scriptures there. There are Bibles in the back of the room. I'm going to be looking at Matthew 28 in just a minute. But um, I first want to acknowledge uh, that some of you this morning might be. Uh, in a little shock. Shockers. A Wichita State shock. Clearly you ate too much breakfast. And uh, so I just want to acknowledge that. And and um, we're just all a little bit mourning over that except for one person. And we don't really care what he thinks. And, uh, <laughs> His team will lose today. But anyway, I'm really excited for you to be here this morning. This, um, this power of Easter. I hope you, I hope at some point you might understand how, how hard it is to teach on Easter Sunday. Because there is absolutely nothing I can say which will capture the idea of new life in Jesus Christ as good as having new life in Jesus Christ. And so no matter where you've been, what you've done, no matter the struggles you may have, no matter how distant you feel you are from God, it is impossible for you to be too distant from God for Him not to welcome you home. And Easter is all about this new beginning, this new hope, this new start, this do-over. And so I just want to read to you the Easter story that I'm going to share with you out of Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. Matthew 28, 1 to 10. After the Sabbath at the dawn of of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. 
Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and he is going on ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I've told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. And they ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, they clasped at his feet, and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. You see up on the slide not only the Matthew 28 citation, but the word gospel. The word gospel is a word which is translated good news. It comes from a couple of Greek words which means to go and make a pronouncement that brings good news to people. Now what you may or may not know is that the word gospel had actually been used before. But it had not been used in the context of faith. It was news for giving, it was used for giving news. The word gospel at that time was used to say, here is some news that is going to change your life, not your everyday newspaper news. Let me give you an example. There was an ancient Roman inscription that said this, the beginning of the gospel of Caesar Augustus. This was an inscription about the time of Jesus, and it said the beginning of the gospel of Caesar Augustus. And then it went on to describe Caesar's birth, his life, his uh, coronation. It's the story of this king who is going to make a big impact in your life, like sometimes governments tend to do. A gospel was news that basically changed the landscape for you. Until Matthew, Mark, Luke, John came along and they began to use the word gospel in religious connotations, the word gospel was a secular idea about news which would change your life in some meaningful way. For example, Greece at one time was invaded by Persia. Well, the Greeks then attacked back. And you may have heard of the Battle of Marathon, where we get the word marathon runner from. There was this great battle at Marathon and another city called Solnus. Well, the Greeks won those battles. And what they did was they went and they sent these messengers, these evangelists, these people with good news. And they went into the cities and they said this, you are now free. You are no longer a slave. Now, is that the kind of news that you would greet with, that's awesome, thanks. Or is that like life-altering news? That you are no longer bound to something, but you are now free. This was news which happened in history had been done for you and it changes your life forever. That's what gospel is all about. Something that has been done for you, it really happened in history and it can change your life forever if you let it. That's why I've entitled this particular message in this series my life is just beginning. I don't know anybody that doesn't need a new start sometime. I don't know anybody that doesn't struggle in some way with, I've made this mistake and that mistake, and I just need to erase it and start all over again. If there is anything about the gospel story, it's that there's this good news that happened in history and it can give you a new start, a fresh start, a begin again. So I'm just going to go through a few things that I think captures the Easter experience. Next slide. One of the first things that Easter brings to you is what I've been highlighting already. 
that in Easter you are promised new starts. In Easter you are promised new beginnings, do-overs. The idea simply is Jesus came out of the grave, stop counting your mistakes. Jesus is alive again, stop worrying about how much you screwed up. And the idea is captured in this next slide. You remember the women left the tomb and they were, they were afraid and yet they were joyful and they were looking forward to something new but they weren't sure that it was really real. Have you ever felt like that? Like, I, I think this is real and I, I think I might get a new start but I'm not sure because I've tried a new start before and it hasn't worked out so well before. Have you ever made the same mistake more than oh, twice? Three times? Easter says you don't need to be captured by that fear. And that's why Jesus simply responds to them. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. Because I'm going to be with you. I am not in the grave. I am not just in a book. I am not just in tradition. I am not just within a building. That's the reason I love our Go ministry. It's all about getting outside, not just of this facility, but getting outside of ourselves so we can serve people that might even stretch us a little bit. I think it's a really good idea. We happen to have at New Song a uh, kind of a mission statement, a purpose statement. It says we are to love God, love people, become unleashed and unrestrained in advancing His kingdom. I... Um, the, the elders haven't uh, said that I could do this, but I'm going to officially change that mission statement. That mission statement is old and tired. Our new mission statement is going to be, we're going to squash bugs for Jesus. <laughs> the kids like that. Next month, all during the month of April, the whole, seat, the, the whole teaching series is basically going to be on this. How to deal, deal with our fears. Deal with our anxieties. The whole month is going to be called Fear Factor. Because I find people, even in the church, are bound by anxiety, and I'm not sure I'm going to start again, and I try to defeat this temptation again and again and again, and it doesn't work. <laughs> And if there is anything about the Christian faith, it is that no matter how far you have journeyed away, God is still looking for you. <coughs> Even when you are not looking for God, He is still looking for you. That's what love does. Love doesn't give up. <coughs> love is not defeated. The second thing that I think this Easter experience brings is an anchor for the storm. Let's face it, in life, you and I are going to face some storms, aren't we? Not storms that might come, but storms that will come. And I love the words in Romans chapter 8. You can look at it uh, later on. Let me put some of them up on the screen. In Romans chapter 8, Paul writes these words to the church. You did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave to fear. If God is for you, who can stand against you? If God is on your side, then what does it matter who is against you? Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing in all creation, Paul says in Romans, can separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate you from that love. Not even death, says this day. And not even the death and tombs that we place ourselves in. Not even the distance that we create between us and God or us and others. If Easter says anything, it says that nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. This next quote is a quote I got out of a book a long time ago, and it's just provided 
a great deal of comfort for me. Next slide there. Stability in the storm comes not from seeking a new message, but from understanding an old one, that God has been, God will be, God is in this world, active in your life, in spite of your blunders, in spite of your fears, in spite of the turbulence that happens around us. And turbulence will happen around everyone's life. Some of you are thinking about the turbulence in your life right now. Some of you are thinking about the way that maybe you have distanced yourself from God for the past years. And some might be even recognizing that we can distance ourselves from God even in the church. Some people I know distance themselves from God by hiding in the church and ignoring God. There will be storms. Jesus himself said, listen, I'm teaching you these things because in the world you're going to have difficulty. In, in the world you're going to have tribulation is the way it's often translated in Scripture. I don't really like that word. We don't use it a lot. I think what he really was saying, in this world, you're going to put your foot in a mess periodically. And it's going to be painful. And it's going to be hard. But don't forget, I will walk with you. I will stay with you through that painful time. The one who created you hasn't just set you on a path and let you go. He's determined to be by your side. Even when you don't want Him to be. Stability in the storm is just listening for that old voice, that message of Christ that says, it's not going to be perfect. The church will not even be perfect. But it is a place for broken people. It is a place for people who want to know the meaning of faith. If you think it is for perfect people, look in the mirror and you'll discover it's not. If you think the church is a place for people who are in the storm and are sometimes just broken, if you're unsure about that, look in the mirror and you'll be reminded. The Easter experience is not a day. Easter is thought of as a moment in time. But in fact, with Jesus Christ in your life, resurrection and new beginnings are always a possibility. You just have to decide if you want to. Or do you just want church? It's a big difference. Easter is about new starts. It's about an anchor in the storm. And it's about the open grave. It's about the open grave because, you see, in Christianity, we're not required to make some kind of pilgrimage somewhere. We're not required to take a look at this next slide, go to some sacred place or sacred space. We are not required to follow a monument. We are witness to a movement. We're not required to genuflect or venerate some idea or icon or thing. We are about following a person. And friends, get this right, this is not a person who has died and stayed dead. This is a person who is as alive in this world as you are breathing right now. If Easter says anything, it says that the Jesus Christ who walks with you is the same Jesus Christ who walked with Peter and Paul. My friends, 
we must hear that very clearly. Because there will be times when the storms and the pain will be too strong and you'll think, surely God's left me. Surely I don't understand all of this mess. And you'll need to remember the idea that at its core, Christianity is not about a place or a space, it's about a person. It's not about creating moments in which you encounter God, but it's about encountering God in every moment. That's the power of new life. That's the power and potential of resurrection. Not then and there, but here and now. That's the power of resurrection. It's not bound in a time. It's not about a monument to a religion, but about a witness to a movement. I love the words of Max Lucado on the next slide. Easter simply reminds us that my life is not futile. My failures are not fatal. And my death is not final. My life has meaning and it has purpose. No matter how broken your physical body may be, no matter how struggling your mind may be, no matter how many years you got under your belt, or no matter how new you are to the game of Christianity, the idea is that your life can have power and meaning because Jesus raising from the dead is a pretty powerful deal. And Christianity says that it is not just about Jesus jumping out of a tomb. It is about Jesus coming out of a tomb and coming into your life. Coming into the world to make a difference. My life is not futile. And my failures are not fatal. How many times do we count up time and time and time again how many times we've failed? Your failures are not being marked down in some book in heaven. The Lord has your name written not in a book, but on His heart. And any parent will tell you a child's name is not written in a book. It's written on the flesh of the heart no matter how distant that child has become. Your failures do not define you. Three words define you. Three words define every human being you will ever know. Three words define all of us who are in the church today trying to seek and figure it out. Three words define all of us in here because we came for breakfast and we thought, well, we might as well stick around. Three words define people who are on television and on the news and doing things that you and I abhor. Three words define people on the other side of the political aisle. Three words define people around the globe. And I know you know what those three words are. But let me say them anyway. Three words define every one of us. Child of God. Child of God is past any color of skin. Child of God is past any gender. Child of God is past any brokenness. Child of God is past. Anything. And Easter says, You are my child. And I'm going to claim you back. Even you. Easter experience is about new starts. It's an anchor. It's the open grave, and finally, it's a lasting purpose. 
Easter is about a lasting purpose. Everybody I know in life wants their life to mean something. Everybody I know in life wants their life to matter in some way. So we build into our children or we build into our company or we try to get the best grades to get into the great school. We try to do things that leave a mark, that leave a legacy, that matter in some way. Some people can do that through work. Some can create things. Some can do all kinds of activities out in the world. But the bottom line is that all of us can leave a legacy. All of us have a lasting purpose. And it is found in the final words of Jesus right after He says to them in the passage that I read to you, Go and I will meet you. And they go and they meet Him. And He says, All authority is given in heaven on earth to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely remember, I am with you to the end of time. Matthew 28. Go everywhere. Bring my love. Give my grace. And remember, I am with you always. I want you to watch a concluding medium. And it is all about capturing the essence, the core of the reason we have hope. The reason, the one reason that we can begin again. And interestingly enough, it is captured in three words. The Easter experience defines you with three simple words. Child of God. And promises you can begin again starting today through three words because he lives you don't have to wait till later you can begin again this morning you are promised your identity in three words child of God and you are promised a new beginning because of three simple words. Because he lives. I pray that this Easter sees you begin to turn and to embrace your new identity and your new promise. It is offered to you today. Because he lives. Will you stand for the closing prayer? Lord Jesus, thank you for embracing us this morning. Thank you for reminding us through media and music and message that we can begin again. That our past doesn't define us, our, our failures do not need to be indelibly stamped on us. That just reaching out our hands, reaching out our heart and mind to this new identity of child of God, to this new energy of because He lives. I pray for each person here to embrace this new identity and this new hope. It is in your Son's risen name that we pray. Amen.